So today we want to do another form of filtering, uh, this time uh, so-called collaborative filtering. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's the technology that is behind uh, the recommender system. So, so <coughs> what is a recommender system? You can think about a recommender system as an input to it is a large, sparsely populated matrix, right? So on these sides, you have users, and on these sides, you have, for example, movies, right? So for each user, you I and the movie. Actually, for some, uh, for each user, you I, and for some movies, uh, you have the rating that this uh, uh, user has given to that particular uh, movie. Say here you have five stars and so forth. And in general, this is very sparsely populated. Um, for example, for the Netflix challenge, when they ask people around the world to devise a better recommended system, uh, there was a slightly less than half a million users. And slightly less than 20,000 movies. I think it was 17.5 thousand movies uh, and I think 480,000 users. But just to give you an idea of the size uh, of the matrix, right? So this is in hundreds of thousands and this is in tens of thousands, right? <coughs> and the fraction that is populated is barely above 1%, right? Because for each movie, if you have 17,000 uh, movies, then uh, this uh, uh, will give you a pretty large number of 170 movies, right? But, uh, uh, so probably they, in fact, selected users that uh, uh, ranked uh, large number of uh, movies for the challenge data set, right? So what is the task of a recommender system? Well, given this table and a particular user UI, you want to figure out which among the movies that he hasn't seen he is likely to like, right? So, and of course you want to recommend uh, top maybe five or six uh, or ten movies uh, that are the most likely that this particular user would like. Right? <coughs> okay. So, how do, there are two basic approaches to this problem. Um, one is called, uh, this is it, maybe, oh, neighborhood method. And the other is called uh, positive matrix factorization. And we will look at both. So first about um, neighborhood method. Uh, you see, uh, in order to have sufficient, but you see the easiest uh, thing for a recommendation would be to recommend a movie that everyone likes. Right? That lots of people that say average score of that movie is large. But this is not a very good um, recommendation method because some of the users might not be mainstream users. Uh, right? Maybe they have particular taste, they like uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, 
dark movies like movies of uh, Quentin Tarantino or they like, uh, uh, you know, Scandinavian movies. So uh, recommending them uh, Hollywood blockbusters wouldn't work for that. So what <coughs> is then a proper approach? A proper approach is to extricate somehow from his entire table, not just his uh, voting history, to extricate something that can be reasonably called to be the taste of that user. So notice you don't you don't want uh, in extricating the taste. If you are not extricating some absolute value of a movie or how generous the user is, you want to make uh, this um, measurement of taste independent on how successful the movie is in terms of reviews that it gets uh, or uh, how generous or critical this user is, you just want to somehow remove this, consider it as a bias, and remove it so that what's left is really the measurement of the taste of the user. Now, one of the ideas in the neighborhood method is to compare the voting scores as vectors, right? Now, the problem here is that all the scores are positive, right? So your vectors will have only positive coordinates. Uh, and that, uh, and you would kind of say, uh, at the moment this is totally vague, but we will elaborate on that, that two users have uh, similar tastes if their vectors of uh, their rankings point into the same direction. But because all the coordinates are positive, we are restricted only to uh, one small subspace of the whole space. So somehow we want to make these numbers both positive and negative. What do you think? What would be the simplest way to make both numbers positive, all numbers both possibly positive and negative. Subtract three from the scores. Sorry? Subtract three from all the scores. Exactly. So you subtract, the, the best probably to subtract is just the global mean of all movies. So let R bar, uh, sorry, uh, R bar, let this be the mean of all uh, ratings, uh, right? So this would be uh, simply sum over all users and all movies of the rating. Um, how do we call the rating? Let's call it R U I. Uh, such that user u has, uh, so this will be sum over all u and all i, so that user i has ranked movie i, divided by the total cardinality of all uh, ui, all pairs ui, such that uh, u has uh, uh, ranked uh, um, so that uh, you has ranked uh, the movie, movie right? So this would be just a simple mean of all ratings, and uh, it's something that is kind of uninformative. So then you can get a new measurement, uh, R hat uh, of UI, simply as R UI, uh, so this here is uh, uh, R U I, right? Oh, well, this would be uh, U. Uh, 
Okay, so this is user fuel, and this is uh, movie I. So uh, this will be rank of uh, rating that the user U gave to the movie R. So R of uh, uh, UI minus R bar. Right? So now we are in a better situation because now all the movies can be either, their score can be either below the global average or above the global average. Right? Now, next thing you want to do is uh, you want to unbias this U with respect both to kind of generosity with respect of the user and popularity of the movie. Because you are not interested in absolute popularity of the movie over the entire population. You are interested, according to your taste, how much does he like the particular movie you are. Now, one way to do the unbiasing would be uh, to do uh, R tilde as R UI minus the mean of uh, all ratings uh, of uh, uh, user i, and then minus the mean of all ratings of movie i. Right now, subtracting this mean will reduce, will remove uh, uh, the bias of the user, whether he is generous or stingy with his marks. Right? Because yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, it's a user view. Thank you. So. You see, if a user gives to a movie three stars, and another user also gives to the same movie three stars, this does not mean that they equally liked that movie. Why? Because maybe one of them, on average, gives four stars. And the other one, on average, gives only two stars. So then the three stars for the guy which on average gives only two stars means that he really liked that movie, right? On the other hand, the guy who on average gives four stars, if he gives three stars, means that actually he didn't like, that he liked the movie below average of the movies he has seen. Right? So this now would remove the bias of the user and also say if a user gives a movie three stars, right? How much did he like that movie? Well, if that movie on average from all users gets four stars, this would mean he didn't like that movie very much, uh, as much as other users. On the other hand, in, if uh, on average this movie gets only two stars, and the movie and uh, the particular users gives it three stars, it means that actually this movie is according to the taste of that user. So then this second part uh, would remove the bias that uh, uh, a movie would have. Well. It turns out that this is not the best way to do things. You want to kind of optimally remove, because you see here, this part here uh, depends only on that particular user. And this part here depends 
only on that particular movie. But we would like to kind of, uh, just like in the case of page run, we would like to make this recommender system as global as possible because we want to leverage as much information from this matrix as possible. So instead of doing this simple trick, uh, we actually solve uh, what's called the least squares approximation. What is the least squares? You simply find that, so, so we will not use uh, this method because it's not optimal, right? Instead, we will solve the following problem. Uh, find uh, B use and B eyes which minimize the sum um, sum over all users and movies such that user use of movie i of r hat which is just this subtracted the, the global mean r hat well let's move it let's actually incorporate this as well so this would be r u i minus r bar so this is our r hat u i and then minus b i sorry minus b u and minus b i and then squared right so now notice unlike this uh, now b i and b u are shared for multiple users so for all i's that user u, particular user u has seen, this difference will share uh, such i's and vice versa, right? Uh, now here, um, b u and uh, b i are variables. So what is this essentially telling you? are trying to maximally remove from the rating scores of users uh, and movies. You want to maximally kind of eliminate uh, bias of the users and bias of the movies so that what is left its norm is as small as possible. So in this way, you will maximally um, emphasize. Now, once you solve this, so, uh, and we will in a moment discuss how you solve uh, um, least squares, right? Once you find the values of the variables uh, we use, so these two guys, this and these are variables, and this here is just a constant, uh, right? It's a mean of all uh, ratings uh, in the table, right? And this also comes, this is also a number from uh, just an element that is on a row U and column I of the input matrix. So, right, so this type of problem is called the least squares uh, problem, right? Because you are trying to minimize 
a quadratic expression, essentially a norm of uh, of uh, vectors that with these starting coordinates, right? So um, once you solve uh, this uh, problem, then you can get another uh, vector r tilde ui simply as r ui minus r hat minus uh, b u zero minus b i zero, right where b zero vector of b zero over all users uh, u and vector uh, b zero over all movies i uh, are the solutions of the least square fit e by e they minimize uh, let's call this sum s of uh, the u vector and the i vector equals to this that minimize s of b uh, u uh, b i right so now we can claim that this number truly reflects the taste of the user because it has been the bias of the user has been removed and the bias of the movie has been removed and moreover it was removed in a kind of optimal arguably, arguably optimal way how would you minimize this quadratic function? So you have a quadratic expression. So these are the variables. These are constants from, obtained from the table. And you want to find the PUs and PIs over all users and all movies for which there exists a ranking so that this sum is as small as possible. How do we solve such problems? Yes, it's the charge of the derivative. Exactly. So the way to solve this is simply uh, you, you would find the, 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 the partial derivative of S uh, B U uh, B I um, with respect to uh, each now, this is kind of a using notation because I have u here as generic variable, so let me then call the vectors um, B capital U and B capital I, so that uh, there is no confusion. So, uh, then we have so what is a uh, vector B capital U? Well, this is simply B U1 up to B U N if you have N users, right? If the size of this table is N here, and uh, well, let's use capital capital N here and capital M. So M is the number of users, N is the number of users, and uh, BI is BI1, BI2, um, up to BIM, right? So this here is how many movies you have, here is how many users you have, and then this sum will be S of 
uh, V capital U and V capital R. So here, in this expression, this will be capital U, and this will be capital I, and um, so this is bias of user U, and you set this to zero, and also you find partial derivative S of B uh, U, B capital I, with respect to B small i, and you set this equal to zero, and here uh, U ranges over all users, and here i ranges over all movies. So in general, pu will be much longer than pi, right? Because we have, say, half a million users um, ranking uh, maybe 20,000 movies, right? And when you differentiate this, um, what do you get? When you differentiate this, two goes out, right? And you get this, right? And times the derivative of P u, you just get one minus. So it will be minus this. And then with the, when you differentiate with respect to pi, right, the coefficient here is one. So again, you will have just one, and you will get a uh, system of uh, uh, m plus n many uh, linear equations. <coughs> so all together, this is a system of uh, m plus m many equations. Right. Uh, now, is this a good place to... Uh, okay, so remind me please, before we finish the class, I have to tell you a little bit more about general theory of least squares. Uh, you see, this is, again, not quite how you do it, because these least squares is kind of a bit unstable, uh, you might get, uh, if you have positive and negative, uh, so positive bias and bias for user and negative bias for you, for, for uh, a movie, they can cancel out and kind of artificially reduce this sum. So what you have to do is something called regularization. But just to explain first the guts of uh, a recommender system, let's just uh, uh, ignore this and simply say we choose PUs and BIs to minimize uh, this sum. Uh, in the real life, what you do is, uh, I can just tell you here, and then we will go more on these squares because that's really important. Uh, so uh, instead, uh, Uh, you minimize sum of R U I uh, minus uh, R bar minus uh, uh, B U minus B I over all U I such that uh, u rank move i and then squared plus mu times sum when uh, um, when u goes between 1 and n of p u squared plus sum when i goes between 1 and m b i squared. When mu is a small factor, 
uh, mu is usually of order between 10 to the minus 4 to all the way to up to 10 to the minus 14. Uh, depending on the problem, and actually there is quite an extensive literature how to optimally choose u. And the reason for that is uh, to avoid what's called overfitting, in which you can have really large u's, uh, b u's and b i's, and somehow they cancel out right um, here, and you get a very small residual sum, uh, but it's kind of ridiculous to use such large numbers. Now, when you add a new uh, factor, then as you try to minimize this, uh, this starts penalizing you if the biases uh, by absolute value become too large. Right? So this is called regularization. And uh, we will come back to least squares problem later because they are absolutely ubiquitous. Uh, right? And uh, uh, you should know how we actually uh, solve them. OK. So now assume that we found the solution for a least square of this type, probably with regularization. And uh, we form this expression uh, RU tilde. So what is it? What simply we took out the mean of everything, because that's uninformative, and we subtracted the biases, uh, you know, the fact that some users are excessively generous, some are excessively stingy, some movies are overall more popular than some other movies, and what is left is really uh, kind of adequately represents the taste of the user. Once we have done that, we can have now two options. Okay, so after we solve these least squares, we can have two options. We can look for neighborhoods of users and neighborhoods of movies. And both options uh, can be kind of equally successfully used in recommender systems. So what is the idea? So we have the matrix, right? And now just consider uh, another matrix, let's call it a uh, biased matrix. So if this was matrix M, right? Then we consider debiased uh, or unbiased matrix M that is simply uh, the uh, matrix uh, with ratings R uh, tilde of UI instead of uh, uh, original R's. So we remove the biases. Uh, so this is U and this is R. Now it makes sense to compare two users and to compare two movies. Two users will be compared in the sense of how similar their tastes are. And two movies will be compared as whether they appear appeal to the similar uh, group of people. Right? So uh, now what you can talk is the, uh, the distance between a user u1, uh, let's see, the distance between, say, user u1 and user u2, which can be defined as, as follows. First, you see all the movies that both you one and U2 have ranked, okay? And then, uh, so uh, consider 
all i such that u1 uh, ranked movie i and u2 also ranked movie i. Uh, let's call this set, uh, uh, let's call it, uh, how do we call it, say uh, uh, d u1 u2. So this is the domain of user u1 intersected with the domain of user u2. So this will be all the movies, right? So that both users have ranked these movies. Right? So uh, then we can consider two vectors. We can consider vector, say, row uh, one, which is uh, um, the set of uh, all the set of all ranks of u1 for movie i such that uh, i belongs to p u1 u2 and vector uh, row 2 which will be the vector consisting of all r's I guess I should have used curly brackets because this is a vector, so not a set, but a vector. So let's make it a vector. And the row 2 is a, rank, a ra ranking of user u2 of all movies i such that also i belongs to p u1 u2. Right? So essentially, say if this is user u1, ah, and this is with tildes, of course, the modified uh, rankings. Uh, so this is user u1, and say this is user u2, and maybe this user u1, this user u1 has seen uh, this movie uh, so there is here R tilde of uh, U1, say, movie J, but uh, it's blank for U2. But uh, here, for example, for 